Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, we are going to be assembling the kill rig from Warhammer 40,000. I'm going to be actually using this in Age of Sigma because I, I decided I want to win and I reckon using this kill rig is the way to win in that game. Trick me if you're not allowed to do that, but that's where I'm going from now on. Anyway, it will be the kill rig or the hunter rig. I've undecided which I'm going to build, but having glanced through the instructions, it looks like it's interchangeable parts and Games Workshop have allowed it so you can pull the guns in and out. I don't believe it until I see it, but potentially you can build both of them in one go. That is what I'm going to go for. Let's talk about everything that I've got in front of me, not in front of you. Hopefully you've got this in front of you as well, but I've got it in front of me. You're going to want the instruction manual. This video will hopefully help you. Better than that, it's going to make all the mistakes for you. So don't copy my mistakes. I'll try and point them out as I do them. The instruction manual is pretty clear, so you probably get a, long, a lot of mileage out of that, but this video will hopefully help. You're going to need all the sprues out of the kit, which is three sprues you've got two big screws and a little babby screw screw sprue whatever you call them look it's half the size so you've got one two three four five five or two and a half i don't know how these work but you've got a bunch of plastic to make and then you need some tools the most important is going to be i don't know they're probably equally important but i would say the nippers i'm going to use citadel's expensive nippers i think they've got some cheap ones as well but i really really like these um get good mileage they cut really close a lot of people advise not cutting as close as i do so bear that in mind as i go through but i'm incredibly lazy i like to speed assemble and speed paint so i'm going to be cutting close and hopefully just not cutting limbs off of orcs and stuff like that then you are going to need plastic glue which i think is the next and most important guys Super glue will work, don't get me wrong. If you've got super glue and you're cheap and <laughs> you essentially just are trying out the hobby or, or whatnot and you already own super glue, by all means, you'll get by. But plastic glue, guys, you've recommended this to me. I've picked it up, I've tried it. It is it's the next level. It's so much better. I so, so enjoyed last, the last assembly video I did and I was using this plastic glue and yeah, highly recommend some plastic glue. People have recommended Tamiyo, I think it's called Liquid Cement. Let me know in the comments below if you would highly rate that over this Citadel plastic glue, which is now the my most favorited possession in the world. So let me know below. You're going to need a craft knife, a, preferably a blunt one like mine. There's, 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 I'm not going to stick it in my arm because it's probably not that blunt, but it's practically blunt or the backside of the blade. And that's to just scrape off any uh, mold lines that we stumble across or any little bits of sprue that don't nip down. And then I've also just got a pair of tweezers to hand just in case there's like fiddly bits that you need to hold and you don't want to get, I don't even know if plastic glue matters if you get it on your hand, as long as you don't catch fire or are easily shocked, I think that means then this is probably safe for your skin, but read carefully over cautions on packaging. There's literally nothing to freaking read other than you might turn it into the human torch i have no idea then the other thing i noticed in the instruction manual is everything i've just told you to use it's actually here read this first before assembling your miniature please read through blah 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 i've never read this but it just tells you to use all of these tools so <laughs> who needs instructions anyway guys let us crack down to business and start building up this beast chapter one are you sitting comfortably we are going to be looking at 1A. Oh, actually, let's just cover this. It does say that you should choose the variant you want to build. Um, I think we can go for both, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm just going to go through in order 1 to 10. So back to what we are picking. So we want number 49, which is half of the big squig worm pig. I don't know. You want 43, which look very clearly to be his testicles that are going to go in his rear end. And then you want 44 the other half of him. So let's find 49, 43, 44, starting with number 49, this big beast of a pig. I'm gonna get my nippers. I'm gonna get super close and snugly, gonna get right cuddled in and give that a little nip. And then the same on his face piece. I'm gonna get in, I'm gonna go as close as I can. Like I said, a lot of people would say not to go that close, cut away and then sort of file and scrape it down. But I'm lazy, I wanna be quick. I want to save as much time as I can, so working my way around this part, just nipping them clean away from the sprue. This bit's a little bit harder to get to. I can tell straight away it's going to need some work. And then his back end, his other bit of back end. And then we're down to the last bit, and we should be free from the sprue and nice and close, not too much work to do. There we go, he's gone. While we're right there, we'll grab ourselves at number 44. 44, yeah, the other half of him. And we're doing it in exactly the same way. We're just gonna nip him nice and free from the sprue. Once again, I'm sitting the blades in as flush as I can to the actual unit. 
and just snipping with the less flat bits of the blade away with the sprue. That's that one nice and removed as well. Still need to pick up the other one off the floor. And where are his big, big <laughs> these have to be his testicles. We'll find out in a minute, no doubt. And there we go. So we've freed up all of those pieces. One thing to mention, and this is why I say maybe shouldn't cut too close. There are a few pieces where I've put like almost a yeah divot into the plastic. Now I am going to smooth that over so it's going to barely be noticeable. And at the end of the day, you know, that took me a couple of seconds to sort out, which is what I personally am a fan of. Like I'd rather spend a bit less time than having to file down the, the screw excess and neaten it out. But I, I can just smooth it down the opposite way if I need to. And 90% of the time I don't cause a problem, but sometimes I have accidentally snipped off a limb, you know, the sort of thing that happens. Or I've got these little divots, like that's now smoothed over. You won't notice that once it's got some paint on, we're good to go. But it's just, I just want to be transparent and let you be fully aware that this is how I do it. A lot of people would not recommend it doing it this way, but a lot of people have evidently got more time or care than I do. Don't worry about it, just do whatever fits your time, preference and needs. And yeah, just essentially just don't have to feel obliged to copy me just because you're watching me assemble this stuff. So I am going to be working my way around, finding all of the places where I've cut this away from the sprue. I'm using my knife. As I mentioned, mine's fairly blunt, so I can use the blade. But if yours is super sharp, by all means use the back. It's gonna achieve a very similar thing. Just using a slightly blunt blade is just a little bit faster. Again, it's all about speed for me, me personally, but I'm just going around finding all of the places where I cut the sprue or cut the sprue off, cut him free from the sprue. I freed this little guy. I'm basically an eco warrior, but essentially scrapey, 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 scrape until it's nice and smooth. I should have mentioned maybe an extra tool is a file, which I do have nearby. So a bonus tool, I didn't actually use it last time, so I completely forgot it existed. But if you've got a big piece of sprue left or you're cutting a bit further away and you're gonna, you may well need a file just to file down some of the bigger pieces. We'll see if I need it in this video. Didn't need it in the last, very, very rarely need it actually. It's normally if it's a super awkward angle and it just leaves a bit more sprue on it than I would like and then I have to bust out the file. That's pretty much worked this one down again. It's looking good. I'm just going to keep going round, smoothing all of these little pieces down just while I'm cleaning up his jewels here and just notice there's a slight, I don't know if this comes across in the, in the camera, but a mold line just along here. So again, it's just a matter of taking the blade and just scraping just one or two little scrapes all the way around, all the way along that mold line. It's just going to make it instantly disintegrate. It's not going to be there. Once we've added the primer, that's going to look absolutely perfect. And there we go. Right, we are on to the gluing stage. And guys, if you did not know, because I didn't know this until recently, the yellow indication is where to place the glue. Look at this, super easy, barely an inconvenience. So I'm going to take my plastic glue, bust open the lid, if I can get it off. There we go, much easier than last time. And as it mentions, it's just placing some glue along this kind of ridge here. Then we're gonna take the tongue and flip it around. So it's facing this way, facing down. And I, I would highly advise dry fitting this beforehand, get used to it. But it's basically, you wanna put, make sure that's on the inside of his mouth. And then there's two ridges or one ridge on this side, just lines up nice and smooth. There we go, it clicked into place. It's just a matter of getting that lip, lip, pardon the pun but on the inside and that, that's gonna fit in nice and snugly, nice and tight. Hold it for a few seconds and then we should be set. And then as per the next instruction, make sure my fingers are out of the way, but it's glue all the way around the outside, the ridge of this. I don't know what it is, squig? Is it a squig? Is it a worm pig? Is it just another sort of beast? I wish I knew and I wish it said. At least when I built the sludge raker, it said it was a sludge raker beast. So I was pretty confident that must be its name. I'm wobbling all over. Don't wobble all over here. When you're gluing this yourself, first of all, don't talk while you're doing it. Second of all, don't bother putting a camera in the way. One of the biggest hindrances to building these miniatures is sticking a random camera in front of your face. It makes it incredibly difficult. But if you avoid that, I don't think you'll have any problems whatsoever with this bit. Put some glue on his tongue here as well. I imagine that's 
going to stick to something in a minute. And then you take the other piece, which is 44, and then these two should just click together. There we go. Then I am going to say pinch that is in as many places as you can, as tight as you can. Really press that together nice and firm, and that's going to get rid of any gap potential that might form and just seal that as tight and snugly wuggly as possible. Break dance break. While he is setting into place, we're going to move on to 1B and oh, this is just simulating it's 1A, but essentially we're going to need his four legs, 45, 46, 51 and 50. Guys, they are located on the other large sprue. They look like little pig trotters and you've got them, three of them are here and then one for some reasons up here, but I guess that just is so it fits. But essentially three legs and one up here. I'll just quickly whip them off. Then we're gonna take the knife once again, just clean up any places where there's a little bit of excess sprue. So I'm gonna just whiz through this because essentially you've seen it once. Do this every single time you make a snip, just smooth that over and you're gonna be in a better position when you paint, otherwise you're gonna keep seeing all of these little blobs sticking up and out of your paint job and it's gonna make you cry. If you stumble across any mold lines, like on the bottom of his tootsies, although the bottom actually might not matter because it's probably gonna be glued to the base. So this might be a bad example, but it's an example of a mold line nevertheless. You just, again, just scrape them away, scrape them away. So work your way around the rest of the, the pieces, taking off mold lines and any excess sprue, or better yet, get some slave labor to do so. Right, those are all tidied up. So we've got the four little trotters here. We're gonna glue on the two big ones, which both happen to be here, his left side, your right side as you're looking at it. So this is just a matter of, once again, taking the glue, I'm gonna squirt, oh, I'm gonna look at the instructions. Yeah, it does actually say to squirt that in here. I'm gonna try and use the glue. Yeah, it is coming out, put a pool in here. I'm actually gonna do both at once because this is so straightforward. One bit in each notch, we're gonna take the uh, this one. I don't know how to describe it. Have a good look at it if you need the piece, but that is gonna slot nicely into here and pinch that in nice and tight. Then you're gonna take the other big one, leaving the two small ones. So this goes on at a nice angle like that, it's sticking out the back of him essentially. And we'll click that into there and push it in as tight to his bum as we can. I'm trying to demonstrate the motion we're going for there and just trying to close up that gap. I will mention that if there are any gaps, we can use a little bit of green stuff, video on the channel doing that. And I did it in the last assembly video as well, off camera. In fact, I think I forgot to mention it. I mentioned it during the assembly video that there was a massive gap. And then during the painting video, I just filled it between priming it and the assembly, I just did a little bit, 10, 10 minutes work of green stuff and closed up that gap. So yeah, check out the green stuff video on the channel if you need any help with closing gaps afterwards. So his leg fell off the second I let go. So I've just added more glue into here and a bit along the top as well, where that is definitely gonna to touch. So let's do what I say and not the instructions for this bit, because yeah, that just fell off within a split second. There's no way there was enough glue holding that in. His back leg, however, is a lot more firm. That's not even set yet and it's in there nice and solid. There is a bit of a gap, so I might use a little bit of green stuff later on. It's not quite set yet, but let's glue in his other side, his right side, your left side, if you're looking at it, except if you turn it upside down like I just have, then it's also the right side. This time I'm gonna put some bonus glue, even though it doesn't say to do so, on these two bits where the legs are gonna sit on. You're gonna want the one with the sort of chain, this little bit of metal, that's gonna go on the back one, and then that just slots in like so, a little bit of pressure into place, but that'll essentially set easily. And then this one, again, you just, if I didn't mention it, it's not obvious, you just line it, line up these little nubs with these little notches and getting the orientation the right way around. So clicking that in there, I'm gonna apply pressure into his leg to try and close that gap as well. well. Let's continue following all the steps for the next instruction, 1C. We're gonna find his little bit of shoulder pads. I guess he shoulder barges things, I don't know. I love this blade, how cool. A little bit of detail is that, I, I, I assume, we can check on the data sheet, but I assume it might be a weapon. Number five here, doesn't actually say what it is, right? It's just the mount himself, so maybe it's not the blade. I thought it was cool, but nevertheless, my hopes and dreams are dashed. So we're gonna need the big sprue again with the legs that were on it. So we want number 47 over here and 52 is on the opposite end. Just following, this is rinse and repeat. We're gonna grab our nippers and we're gonna cut super close. Has somebody, have I got a free nip? Like I didn't do this. That is not 
not connected. Wow, somebody did one for me. But yeah, nice and close. And I'm just going to nip this away from the sprue. Tied up the sprue snips. Once again, you can see this one's got a big jaggedy piece, but that won't take two seconds to first slice off with the blade and then smooth down with dragging the blade across. We'll just rinse and repeat that all the way around these pieces. So while my help slash assistant is filing down the other one, I'm just gonna glue this one into place. So let's just have a look at it to make sure you get the right piece. So on his left shoulder, is that right? No, it's wrong. On his right shoulder, you're gonna want this piece, which was this, this was, 52 if you're keeping track of the numbers essentially the spikes are at the top line we're going to just do the same as normal and take the glue and just fill all of this indent here all the way around like so i'm going to take the piece very very easy to fit these pieces and that's just going to bang slot in there this one doesn't matter if it's super tight or not because it's just a piece of armor that is always going to be a gap between him and his skin and on his other shoulder his left shoulder your right as you're looking at it we're just going to repeat the process i'm going to put a load of this plastic load i'm going to put some of this plastic glue in this little indentation which the shoulder pad 70 70s 70s or 80s which which decade is it but anyways power jacket shoulder pad just clicks into like so just hold it into place for a few seconds while that sets and with that glue in place that is completely finished guys tick that is the stage complete that is completely done now and it does advise that you should then paint this piece up i'm going to go work out off camera what that is going to mean because it's an assembly video where i can't build it all seems pretty weird but I'll, I'll i'll keep going but there you go that's that's super straightforward all of one is now done and you've got a beast ready to paint guys do not continue any further gluing anything to this by all means go and build up the other sub assembly parts which i'm going to go and try and do but basically paint this up before you start gluing bits to or this onto anything it's going to help massively in the long term guys we are going to be moving on to chapter two now which is it looks like it's building up the sort of trailer chassis chariot whatever you would call it that attaches to the beast later once we've painted up some pieces i'm going to continue cutting things out showing you where they are on the sprue probably going to miss out any of the sort of filing down slash scraping of all the sprue pieces because you've got the gist do it on every single cut that you make file it down smooth it off it's going to give you a much better finish on the miniature going forward so for 2a we're going to be looking for the big piece which is number 40 we're going to want 41 and 42 which is sort of these rails that are attached so big piece super easy to find probably isn't this piece obviously isn't that piece it would be way too easy it is uh, this piece so it's on the one where the the beast itself was so this must be number 40 yep yeah, says it right here and then 41 is over here on this other big sprue and 42 down here so i was so close thinking it was this piece anyway let's uh, snip 40 off and let's get that scraped down So attaching all of these pieces together is going to be super easy. You're just going to want to put a little dab of glue in each of these big holes on the actual base part. One, two, three, four. And then you're going to take the bars and essentially they all face outwards. So nice and easy. Just click them in there, little pinch into place and let them set. Same on the other side. Have the bar facing outwards, little rail, make sure your orcs don't go tumbling onto the ground there in their little leggies. Bam, how did I notice with 2A it was more than just this box here? We're also gonna want 48, 53, and 36. They're all over the place, but let's track those down. We'll start with 36, which is A, the biggest piece, so it's easiest to find, but also just as you start removing pieces from the sprue, it's gonna make them easier to locate any of the others. Snip, 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 snip. Snip, 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 snip. 48 and 53 are on the other sprue where the big beast was. You've got this little piece down here. There's only one little bit to connect, disconnect, snip. And 48 is exactly the same. One piece to snip away, snip. Right, for actually gluing these pieces together, I've spent quite some time looking at the manual, finding this notch, lining it up in here, and it just doesn't, it doesn't sit flush. 
it it grips so, but i could fit it anywhere inside here it slides back and forth and it rotates loads on the other side it's exactly the same both pieces have so much movement so i'm either making a huge mistake or this just sucks it's got these angled not these ang angled nubs and these aren't angled uh, i'm lost what i'm going to do is glue it to the actual beast itself because these pieces fit in here it takes a bit of finding but once you rotate it the right way around there we go it just like sort of it fits so perfectly and snugly so i feel like just i'm going to stick it in here and deal with attaching the sort of hauser chariot whatever it is to it afterwards so probably going to regret this this might be one of those mistakes i'm going to make for you save yourself some trouble or I might have just found you the secret shortcut passageway. I put way too much glue into there and sort of melted it, but at least it's going to fit firmly. So I'm going to wiggle that round until it's locked into the position, which just fits so perfectly. It, it just feels like it's right. It feels like they were made for each other. And then I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. This time, hopefully a little bit less glue so I don't just pour it out once I connect the piece in. There we go. And then once again, Obviously, it's going to have roughly the same angle, so it helps you work out that it's going to go in this way. And then it's just a matter of rotating it round until it locks into the place that it just feels like it's a perfect fit. There we go. Found it straight away that time. And then ultimately, if it doesn't quite fit with the chariot afterwards, I can just nip off these nubs and I'll just glue it to anywhere. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be fine. It's going to be fine. So the last piece to connect up all of 2A is needing 37. Let's have a look on the sprues for that. That wasn't too bad to find. So we're on the one without the beast and 37 is this little corrugated iron piece over here. So let's connect up 37 with all of the other pieces. A uh, little bit of glue in this little area here and on here. Then this is basically just line it up with these two little nubs here. Try and turn it over so we can all see. Click that into place and then oh, slide past it. Let's slide back. It's like a slip and slide. And then we're just going to try and hold that flush. And then I possibly forgot to press record there. So we moved on to 2B, which is going to be a paint job after we are finished, but it's connecting up all these pieces. We need to retrieve one, two, and three. You can see I've got number two in my hand. So they were pretty big pieces, pretty easy to find, except number two is on the other sprue to those sneakily hidden away, but we got it, we got it, it couldn't hide for long. Right, let's glue these pieces together. So we're gonna put, actually, I'll do it on the other side of this little piece. And once again, inside these little notches, we're gonna put a bit of glue, and then spin that over, and it's gonna to connect to these little nubs here. And in that goes, clicked in. Just hold that for a split second. And then we're gonna connect it to the, the wheel base as well. And you're going to find on this piece, it's got these little notches here and here that are going to slot in here and here and hold it into place. So following the gluing suggestions, it's essentially gluing these nubs and all the way along. And this one on this side and all the way along as well. And we're just going to make sure this goes in in the right place there and there and then squish that together. You can see how strong the plastic glue is. I was applying pressure here, which we've only just glued, and it's already set hard enough that it could take a little bit of light pressure, light pressure slash hard pressure from me. We're gonna connect the two bits of the chariot together now, as demonstrated here. It's just a bit of glue around the middle, which is just here. So run the glue all around, all the way around this flat edge, turning this over, and you can see exactly where it connects in. So we'll just push those two pieces flush together. You can see that the sort of banister side lines up nice and snug. That's really clicked in there tightly. I accidentally applied pressure and pulled this apart. So I'm not sure the bottom has the glue in the right place. No, it certainly does not. That can't possibly hold it. Look, that's hollow, but it told me to put the glue there. So that's not gonna hold. So I'm just gonna pull this away as best I can and just correct that. You can see these glue bits here weren't touching anything. So that doesn't look very good. So let's apply the glue back on these two bits sticking up here, on this bit sticking up here, as well as the dint here and here too. Get a bit in that dint, because I think that's where it's actually gonna sit in. And then we'll try and get a bit of glue along the edge instead, because I think that's where it actually connects. More like that, more like drawing two little rectangles. I believe that's gonna be a much firmer connection. 
push those back together and give them a pinch together. You can see the glue splurt out a little bit there. I'll just wipe it up with my finger while I can, probably giving myself a nice fingerprint when I spray paint it, but at least it's not splurged out. So as I just mentioned, it does say to paint this up first, but I was just messing around with dry fitting it and just making sure it all fits correctly. And I noticed, I think a mistake, as I mentioned, I, I glued these pieces to the actual beast itself instead of the platform. And once you try and dry fit it, you can clearly work out they're supposed to connect here and here as well, can you see these two little notches? Essentially goes in there instead. And if we look at the instructions, it doesn't it's, it doesn't say to glue the middle. Basically you need to glue here and here and it says up there. So you can do it the other way around. If you're lucky and notice the two notches in the middle of the platform, then you don't need to glue it to the beast. And they do fit nice and snug and tight in there. So you'd have the same effect. But I think, I think let me know in the comments below, but I think the instructions were actually wrong. So these are the two sub assembly parts so far. So we've got the beast and his sort of platform, his chariot, his his howder. Uh, Benson keeps telling me that. Let me know in the comments below if he's leading me up the garden path, but he seems to know his stuff. Next piece of work is 2C and it's simply grabbing these two wheels. But once again, I you know, I've not painted this yet, so I can't really connect them, but I will just cut them off just so we can see. Then we'll keep them to the one side before we start painting all of this up. Super easy to locate the two wheels. They're on the beast sprue and they're just opposite each other on this particular piece. Then we're just going to tidy these up and then part them to one side. One thing to notice is they've both got two flats. So when I go to spray paint them, I will stick them flat side down to some card, prime them up, and they'll be good to paint up like the rest of them. And I'll paint these up probably deassembled as well, and then stick them all together painted. And I'm going to call time on the video here, guys. Now, this is a world's first for Watch It Paint It, a multi-part video. Personally, I am not a fan of multi-part videos, so I do apologize for doing it in this way. Let us know in the comments below if it bothers you or not. I just, I've been building for freaking hours and it's just tiring. And obviously, I would like some feedback. Are you enjoying this video? Is this the sort of thing you would like to see? Is this assembly helping before I go and spend another 3, 10, 15 hours building and constructing the video. Anyway, I thought it was quite a natural break. We've built up the squig himself and the, the howder, the hauser, the chariot, the rig around him. So I thought, I thought it was a good natural break before we're going to do the weaponry and the orcs. So I thought that was a reason to stop here and, and let people feedback a little bit in the comments. Now, as for this actual build, I think the miniature is really, really cool. It's very interesting, big bulk, he goes together well. Only a couple of sort of um, gaps to fill on the beast's legs so far, so not too much filling and, and fixing after assembly. I love that the instructions come with this very clear do this as a sub-assembly, paint it, do this as a sub-assembly, paint it. I think that's absolutely fantastic for a newbie like myself. That's really helpful to break it down and just enforce you to try sub-assembly because this will be really, really hard to paint if I stuck it all together. The only negative of these instructions is there's at least that one mistake where it tells you to put those pins that attach to the squig in the wrong place on the rig. Um, it didn't really affect me overall because I went through fixing it in a different way anyway, but obviously that, that does look like a mistake to me. Let me know if I'm wrong in the comments. And the other thing is there's that bit of the gluing on the, the, the just here where you glue along here. It, I'm sure it shows you just to put some glue and it doesn't, it doesn't explain that. That bit's hollow, so you need to be a lot more precise with where the glue goes. But other than that, instructions are pretty clear. I've not had any other problems. And technically, they're not problems in that the instructions aren't clear. They're just wrong. So <laughs> there's that. Anyway, guys, hit subscribe, hit like, hit some comments below, and make sure if you want to see the next video, you let us know and I will get to working on it. Thank you all ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Don't do as I do, do as the instruction manuals does, but also make, watch this because it'll, it'll help. Definitely, definitely. Keep watching, keep watching all the way to the end. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Fuck, that didn't work. That light just doesn't give a shit.